Now, this might sound like a topic that does not even deserve to have a video made for it. But it does. Big time. I frequently get questions like, Lassie, what should I include in my cover letter? What should I write? What are they asking for? The best part is that the question serves a little value. It's almost irrelevant. The job description will tell you what you need to write. A good job description. And I'm going to show you the tricks. Let's go! Hi, it's Lassie Albin. Welcome to my channel, where I share weekly tips and advice on how you can accelerate your career. I invite you to subscribe to my channel below here. Hit also the bell button to ensure that you don't miss any of the future career acceleration tips. So how to read a job posting and to extract the right information out of it is crucial for your job application. There is no point in sending a one-size-fits-all CV and a cover letter where you wrote things that you thought were useful and cool. Whatever you're writing, whatever you're conveying, that needs to match with the job posting. Because those are the factors that the buyer, the company, the recruiter is looking for. Here's the key to everything. It is all in there, in the job description. No need to invent anything new. It's there. A well-written job description has everything you need for your CV and cover letter fix. I would still call and get a hold of the hiring manager regardless of how good the job description. But yes, there is little need to try to innovate a cover letter and come up with new things to say. Recruiter wants to, you to highlight what they are asking. That's it. If you have an unprofessional job description in front of you, there's even more reason to pick up the phone and get a hold of the hiring manager. Why is this? It's a chance for you to ask the following things. One, are they serious about this position? Why did they post it and why didn't they put the attention for the job description? And second, what stuff do you need to have uh, for your good job description in your mind? What do you need to know from them that you can picture a job description that you can reply to? It's a great chance to cut the line. You're going to have fewer applicants for crappy ads, basically. Uh, and many times there's something good. So there's good value opportunity behind the job description. Maybe it was just not done rightly. So call them up. But hey, let's jump right into a few live examples that I saw this morning. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of examples, fairly different examples, just to get a give a feeling on, on what to look for in a job description in general. And there are always certain things that you can always find. You have, first of all, the about us, about the company. You have sometimes about the team that you will be potentially joining. Then you have the role, so about role and about the tasks included in the role. And then finally you have what we need or requirements. So you can always find those um, four blocks, four or five blocks uh, in every job description that are well written at least. So here we have financial planning and analysis manager, Munich, Germany, uh, potentially remote. We can see the uh, who has posted it. So it's a direct hire from the from the company. So here. We have, normally I would recommend, try to scroll, scroll down and see where's the about us part. So of course you've been researching the website or you will research search the website, but here you can see what is this company all about. Have a look, what values do they bring here? What general knowledge do they convey? Here, a little bit of vision, and then it's all um, data. So have a look at this and then move on to the to the next ones the role what's the role in this particular example it's what i find very useful is 
is this. Experienced FMPA manager mm, can be an analyst who has experience and making the next jump, for sure. Uh, and then here, uh, detailed analysis formulate the medium to long-term financial strategies plan for DUC. That's of core essence here. And then the next sentence, you'll work closely with the business unit heads to build their annual budgets and forecasts and produce models. And then the rest for me is, and then this one, financial statements, of course. Um, but the rest is really typical and given to a financial manager role. So in many cases, you have a description where there's a lot of the things that you as a finance manager have done already. They are given in your work and those are the minimum requirements that anybody needs to have who functions as a finance manager. So try to look for these specific things that they look for in here. And you pick up this one and you can say, I've done this, I've done this, I'm experienced in this, I can communicate um, across stakeholders in different levels, I've done it, budgets, no issue, focus on that. What about the person? Bullet points. Experience in a similar finance analysis role. Um, if you apply for a finance manager job, that's a given. Ideally, wish list is pharma or FMCG, but not essential. So even if you don't have it, it's not a must. Don't, so don't, don't get stuck on that. Excellent numerical analytical, given. Large data sets, given. IT savvy, given. SAP. If you have SAP, um, experience, highlight that because there's other systems as well. This will be a bonus for you. Um, office, everybody needs office, BI, everybody needs BI, strong communication. So as you can see, all this is generic. Actually, even all this is generic, except for the fact that if you have SAP, you highlight that. And here you just highlight, I've done um, final, financial analysis as a manager, as an analyst, I have, and then you hit on these points, and you can communicate across stakeholders. Those are the few points that you can pick from here and plant them in your uh, cover letter. You should have them in your cover letter. The rest, this one, you can just summarize this one as, in addition to my um, standard finance manager skill set, and that covers everything. And then you focus on the things that actually differentiate this position of a traditional standard um, black and white finance manager position. Fluent in German and English, this is going to be non-negotiable, so if you don't have it, it's not going to fly. But as you can see, sometimes descriptions are very generic. Finance is a good example because finance is finance. So try to pick those two or three, four things that you can really focus on which are different to this position compared to a black and white. Um, and then the systems, make sure you uh, mention those ones as well. Rewards, how to apply, that's it. So this is fairly clear. It's very open. Uh, many finance professionals can apply. And just to show you how to pick up the uh, particular words. Next, Swift is looking for London. A portfolio marketing manager. Here's a different example. What makes it different is that it has much more specific requirements what they want. So wish list. About Swift, we have it at the end. So here again, pick again things that you would like to pick and that you connect with, with values. Um, what are they doing? How do they do it? At least get a feeling and in your cover letter, it's also good to mention why you want to work for Swift. What in this part appeals to you? Why, why that company and why not somebody else? What about the ask? So this is future global payments, go to market expert, um, seamless, frictionless, fairly, fairly clear, um, multi-year program. So that is explaining you what it is for you to decide, is this for you? Do you like it? This is much more for that than anything else. You will join a team, co-creation letters, uh, working collaboratively, uh, and then you end up into market engagement. 
Good. So it's all about go-to-market plans, um, product positioning, messaging, and opportunity um, identification. Sales, you uh, provide help to sales. So basically, work with the product management, work with sales, work with customer satisfaction, identifying opportunities. Um, nothing really new here. It's just a good way of describing what's included in the position, um, what are going to be the big three things that you're going to be working on. And these three things, the, uh, three things, for sure they will expect you to have prior experience. So let's have a look. Requirements. Degree in economics, business, marketing, 10 years experience. So this is fairly open, commercial degree. 10 years of experience, five in this. And this is, to me, this is quite hard requirement because market will have these candidates. So it's good to have that. It's going to be hard to convey a message if you don't have um, this one, first point. Domain knowledge. Demonstrable interest, domain knowledge, that's that's what matters. Domain knowledge in cross-border payments, domestic payment schemes. You're not going to have experience in all of them, but at least you should be able to highlight two or three that you've done them. You have deep knowledge, deep domain uh, experience. Another must. So these ones are a must. Not all of this, but at least some of them. And then experience in working with world's largest global financial institutions. Another one, considerable experience. It doesn't say ideally experience of working. It says considerable experience, a must. And then we move into more generic ones. So the top must haves are these three. Focus on those three. The rest is then um, regular requirements for these, these types of positions. So three points here, not really anything specific here. Um, if you can hit on some of these points here, market engagement, sales in in enablement, and customer satisfaction. If you've done it, hit on those, but make sure you fulfill these three requirements to the best possible uh, degree. So that's a bit how I would advise to look for these things. Um, it doesn't matter how long the job description is. You can, many times it's 80% it's generic, and you just have to pick the 20% um, and cover the generic in a way that I just explained. You can you can say, in addition to the regular standard skills required for a finance manager, and then you move on to the specific things. That's it. Happy hunting. And there you go. These tips should support you well in extracting value and keywords out of the job description. And in case you want to give your current employer a further go, I have a new on-demand program rolling out in March on how to advance your career with your current employer. Step-by-step -step executable program by Goldmark. In case you want to get notified when the program is out, just drop me an email address via the link below and I'll keep you posted. And hey, if you like the video, share, subscribe, like, and I will see you in the next piece.